Hey, hi, how's it going, YouTube friends? I hope, I hope you're all having a great time. Today, I'm here to show you how to unlock the Bob Loader on Motorola the mobile devices. I know I made a tutorial about this not long ago, but things have changed. The Motorola website has completely changed, and many of you have been getting lost there and don't know what to do or how to unlock the bootloader on your devices. That's why I'm bringing you an update for this year so you can do it quickly and easily on your Motorola mobile devices. I'll also be answering some questions and concerns about why some of you aren't getting the bootloader code. So if you want to know about this and more, let's get started. Alright folks, to get started, we basically need to be connected to a Wi-Fi network. This is very important. You can use your own, your mom's, your neighbor's, but you must have a Wi-Fi a connection. In this case, using mobile data is not valid. Once you have this, we're going to go to the settings on our phone. We're going to look for device updates and we need to make sure our phone is fully updated. In my case, I have an update to install, so I'm going to go ahead and update it. We can tap here to check for updates and if one appears right away, we'll tap on update phone. Once the download or whatever is finished, the phone will start to continue with the installation. It's going to turn off. Once our phone turns back on, the update process will have finished. If you look at the taskbar, you'll see that it shows we have an update and that it's still being applied, but this won't take long. So basically, what we're going to do now is go to our settings. We're going to scroll all the way down to where it says about phone. Once you're inside, as you can see, I have a Moto G 5G. This phone has TWRP. We're going to scroll down to where it says build number and tap it about five times until it says you are now a developer. Then we'll go back and head to where it says system. Once you're in system, a new option will appear called developer options. We entered it inside here. Look for the option that says OEM unlocking and enable it. Then once again, confirm that you want to enable it and scroll down to where it says USB debugging. Enable it and tap accept. Careful if it appears grayed out for you and you can't select it at all. It's either because you have a very old update or you don't have Wi-Fi available. If we had Wi-Fi available, this option would be enabled for us. Another reason you might not be able to unlock or enable OEM unlocking could be the carrier you have your contract with. In this case, if the device doesn't have unlocked bands, these options might not appear on the phone since they're blocked directly by the operating system. Recommendations? Install an operating system from another country or carrier and change the device's update servers. But for that, a completely separate tutorial would be needed if you're interested. This is usually common with devices from the United States or Canada that are imported and sometimes also with some from Europe to Latin America. These problems often occur because they don't come with unlocked bands. They're only made for AT&T, T-Mobile or certain carriers that don't allow us to perform these unlocks. For everyone else who has been able to activate this, we can continue with the tutorial. Now that we have this guys, the only thing left is to move to the computer to do the next downloads. But heads up, before we do this, your phone will be formatted if we go through with this process. I'm letting you know at this point because there are people who don't want this to happen, but the phone will be formatted once we follow the steps on the computer. I hope this is absolutely clear to you. If not, you can go back, not continue with the tutorial. There's absolutely no problem with having those options enabled on your phone, but it's very important to remember that the phone will be completely wiped once we do the steps on the computer. So, all right guys, now that we're here at the computer, we're gonna need these two files that you see on the screen. The first will be the Motorola drivers, and the second is the folder to unlock the bootloader of our pack in for Motorola. You can get these two files on my website and I'll leave the download link for you in the description. On my website, you'll find these two files and a third one, which is the Motorola code page. We'll use that one a bit later. For now, we're going to focus on these two files. We're mainly going to install the drivers, right click on it and select run as administrator. Click yes, and then it will bring up this window. Click where it says continue. Then next, accept the terms and conditions. Click next and the installation of the Motorola drivers will begin. This will allow our phone to connect properly to our computer so we don't have any issues during the process. Just a reminder, this installation might take a little while depending on your computer and without it, it won't be possible to unlock or root your phone. So if you get any errors with these drivers, be careful. Let me know in the comments. Once the installation process is finished, we're going to click finish here and you can put this aside anywhere so it doesn't distract you. Now, let's open WinRAR 
right click and select open or if you want to extract it go ahead and extract it once inside winrare you'll see this bob loader folder drag it to your desktop and you won't need winrare anymore either let's leave it in a corner so it doesn't distract us here guys inside this folder there will be two things first the necessary codes which will open in a notepad file with these codes we'll be able to send the computer's information to the phone and a second folder which will be the bob loader folder containing the adb needed to unlock the phone what are we going to do guys first and foremost we're going to open powershell or the cmd from this folder how are we going to do it we're going to press the shift key on our keyboard the key above control you should be seeing it on the screen hold it down and with the mouse not on any file but inside the folder we're going to right click while holding shift a small window will pop up where we'll have some new options that say open in terminal or open powershell window here note for those of us on windows 11 we can work in terminal open terminal but since i know more than one of you has windows 10 we're going to click on open powershell here in this case for those who have windows 7 or windows xp older versions we're going to click on open in terminal in my case, I'm going to enter PowerShell, since I know many of you have Windows 10, so you can see what we need to do. Once inside PowerShell, this window opens. At the top, we're going to type CMD and press Enter. And if you notice, a new path appears here in PowerShell. For those who open directly in the terminal, we won't need to type CMD. And as you can see, it takes us directly to the local disk, to the full path, just as if we were in PowerShell. Basically, quickly, we don't need to type CMD. For now, we're going to work with PowerShield since many of you have Windows 10, as I mentioned earlier. And if your PowerShell appears blue or in a different color than mine, which is black, that just means we might have different themes, but the steps will be exactly the same. So don't worry if your PowerShield is blue. All right, guys, now that we have this PowerShell in CMD mode, we're going to move to our phone to put it into fast boot mode and connect it to the computer. All right, guys, now that we're here with our phone, all we're going to do is hold down the power button and turn off our phone. We select power off. And once our device is turned off, we're going to do the following command. We're going to press the volume down button and the power button, the button to turn it on. We're going to press that button and the volume down button. We're going to keep them pressed until it enters fast boot mode. When we're in fast boot mode, it's a completely different interface with an Android figure with its belly open and some white letters at the bottom. Once we're here, we can connect our phone to the computer. We're going to need a USB cable. In this case, this phone uses a Type-C connector. So I'm going to use this one, I'll connect it and we'll plug it into our phone. Once the phone is connected to the computer, we'll go uh, to PowerShell and we'll need the notepad file we opened at the beginning, where we have these codes you see on the screen. If you're wondering where that notepad file is, it's Sompa Miss Fasplapamba. It's right in the folder we had earlier, the one we extracted from the WinRAR archive. And here we have it, the necessary codes. We go in there. And now we have what are essentially the extracted codes. First, a pestature to bomb. For the first option that says fast boot device, we're going to select it and right click to copy. Or we can select all of it and press the control key. And the C key at the same time, both at once, control and C, this will copy it. Then we'll go to PowerShell and paste it by pressing O, control and V at the same time, both keys together. We press them and as you can see in PowerShell, the command that says fast boot device is automatically pasted. We're going to press the enter key e, uh, to continue and this little code appears here, made up of numbers and letters. This is our phone. It means that the computer is correctly recognizing the device. If you see waiting device, meaning waiting for device, there could be two reasons. Basically, it means that the computer is not recognizing our phone. What should we do? Change the cable, switch to a different port on the computer. If you have a desktop, connect it to the back instead of the front. If you have a laptop, try different ports. As I mentioned, change the USB cable. Use a good quality USB Type-C cable. And finally, if our phone still isn't recognized, it's possible there is damage to the Type-C port itself, which is rare and not very common. It's also quite common for your phone not to be readable by the computer because, as I said, there are devices that, depending on the manufacturer, don't allow these processes. Therefore, it blocks all those options that we can perform on our phone through a computer. Let's continue with the people whose computers do detect their device. We're going to use the next command, which is the one that says fast boot, OEM, and the rest, all that stuff. 
Just like before, we're going to select the whole thing and hold down Control and the C key to copy it. We're going to go back to PowerShell D. Press Control V to paste it. And again, as I said, we're going to press Enter. Once we press Enter, this really long code will appear. What we're going to do is select each one individually and copy it into our notepad. We're going to copy the entire first box. It's very important to make sure there are no spaces at the beginning or end. We do the same with all the rows that appear there all the way down to the uh, rows with zero. Once we have everything copied in a straight line, I'm going to expand the notepad to check that the code is complete. The code is quite long and extensive. But what we need to make sure of is that there are no spaces between the numbers and no spaces at the end or the beginning of the code. Basically, it shouldn't be surrounded by spaces, nor should there be any spaces inside separating it. With all this in mind, we're going to need the following page, which I mentioned you can find at the same link where you downloaded these files called Motorola Codes page, which you can also find on my website. We're going to go to it and it will take us to what looks like a login page. In this case, you can register with any email or to make it easier, just sign up with Google at the bottom right. In my case, that's what I'm going to do, okay? Once we've logged in with a Google account, one, it will take us to a completely different page. First, we're going to focus on four boxes at the top of box that have logos. Let's click on the first one, which is the one that explains how we can get that code. Now let's move on to the second option where some phones will appear with a little hand clicking on them. If we go in there, it will basically give us a tutorial of what I'm telling you us in the video, but in written form. You'll see the codes that appeared for us show up along with what we need to do. But what really matters is a white box at the bottom where we can enter our, our code. In this case, we're going to go there, right click and paste or use control V and we'll paste our entire code. Let's make sure there are no spaces either at the end where the zeros are on or it says I are at the beginning. Once that's done, click the little red button that appears and it will start verifying. If your phone can be unlocked at the bottom, you'll see an option that says yes, click it and a button will be enabled for you. If your phone can be unlocked, that button won't appear. You'll only see the option to click yes. So what happens here? As I mentioned, there are many people whose carriers uh, don't allow them to perform this unlock. It may or may not provide the code ya in power shield mode, but it's very important to note that there are carriers that don't allow this. As I mentioned before, the carriers block this, not because it's a Motorola or Moto G50, but because of the carrier where it was purchased. If the phone was uh, uh, imported from the United States or Canada, it usually comes with that security lock. For this, if you want another video specifically talking about this and how we can solve it, let me know here in the comment section. All right, guys, it will show us, it will say at the top that it has already been sent to our email if us that we should check it. We're going to click accept here and then go to our emails. In my case, I did it with Gmail. Uh, and if you notice, I already received the message. It was very fast. And here we have the code. This code is unique for each phone, guys. Don't use my code or a friend's code because the phone could end up working really badly. It could get bricked and lose its operating system. Is there a solution? Yes, reinstalling the operating system. If that happened to you, down below in the video description, I'll leave an option called My Phone Is Stuck On The Logo. And there you can solve that problem. All right, guys, now that we have this code, we're going to select all of it, copy it, and then go back to our desktop. We're going to open Notepad, take the last option we had, add a space and paste the code right there. And we'll end up with a complete line that says fast boom unlock and the code. Remember, there can't be any spaces before or after only between them. Again, we're going to select it, press Ctrl plus C and head over to PowerShield. We're going to copy it and press Enter. With this, the phone will restart. And when it turns on, the first option will say, we don't want to unlock our bookloader. And the second option will say, we do want to unlock the bookloader. For this, we're going to press the volume down button to select the second option and then press the power button. With that, we would have the bookloader unlocked on our phone. If you look at PowerShield, it shows us that everything went fine and finished correctly. If you see fail, it's probably because you selected the first option. That means you still want to keep the VOOC loader Bob locked. Remember, you can repeat these steps with the same code for your phone if you ever run into a problem. Now that we have this, guys, the only thing we need to do on our phone is go to the right tab where it says Start. 
There, we're going to press the power button. If start doesn't appear for you, use the volume up and down buttons to navigate and look for the option that says start. Press the power button and your phone will begin to restart. Just as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, the phone will be formatted. So don't come here in the comments saying, but you didn't say, I am saying it. What happens is that people skip steps and never find the part where I mentioned that the phone will be formatted. Now, all we have to do is wait for the phone to start up. Normally, this process tends to take a while since obviously the phone needs Ori to reset all its settings. So all we can do is wait and once it turns on, we'll continue. All right, everyone, the phone has started up. So let's go ahead and tap continue. The phone is going to start up as if it were brand new out of the box. Basically, we're going to skip all these steps. Just keep tapping next on everything. Uncheck those selections. And once the phone has been set up, as you can see, it started up correctly. The phone now has the Vyush loader unlocked and there are absolutely no issues. The phone is not bricked and it is turning on. With this, the only thing left is to move on to the next video about how to root. I remind you that I will leave the root instructions here in the description of this video. For now, only the TWRP video will be uploaded. In this case, this phone is a Moto G50 5G, which still doesn't have an advanced TWRP recovery available. So I will be uploading a video on how to root these phones without the need uh, uh, for advanced recovery. So don't forget to turn on the notification bell to all notifications eh, and subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to give me a powerful like if you enjoyed this tutorial. And if you had any issues, leave them here in the comment section. Let me remind you that I'm streaming on Twitch. I would really appreciate it if I've helped you go and give me a follow. Uh, drop by for a bit and I'll help you for free. If you have any problem or solution you want to work on with your phone since I'm live. And also, don't forget to follow me on all my social media, which you'll find down below in the description of this video. And as I say in all my videos, guys, I don't like to keep you waiting. So until next time, bye bye.